Hello, friends, and thank you so much for downloading this week's podcast. We are so excited that you're taking time to grow in your faith by listening to these messages. That's our dream in these sermons. We hope that in some small way, they help you in your walk of faith, help you to grow into the person that God yearns for you to be. We also want to encourage you to be part of our social media family. Every day we try to post encouraging messages on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can simply go to these different social media accounts and click on Saint on the Divine and be part of our social media family. And if you don't live in the Jacksonville area and don't have access to a church, we encourage you that every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. we broadcast our Divine Liturgy live. You simply have to go to www.stjohnthedivine.com. That's our church website. At 10 o'clock in the morning, click on live broadcast and you can watch our services live. And finally, we're really excited about a brand new internet radio show that we, we have here at Saint of the Divine called Healthy Minds, Healthy Souls. It's broadcast on the second and the fourth Tuesday of every month at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Simply go to ancientfaith.com at 8 p.m. Eastern Time and click on the banner for Healthy Minds, Healthy Souls. We, in this show, we hope that we're kind of merging faith and psychology to kind of give you some practicality in your own walk of faith. So once again, thank you so much for downloading this sermon and we hope to see you soon at Saint on the Divine. God bless you and stay strong in your faith. Well, thank you again uh, for being here this morning. You know, today we are beginning a brand new sermon series entitled, The Comforter. And the word comforter is one of the words that are used to describe the role of the Holy Spirit. And if you'll join me over the next four weeks, we're gonna delve into understanding as best as we can what the Holy Spirit's role is in our life. And let me begin by just simply giving you a qualifier, and that is that it is difficult, if not truly impossible, to understand all that God is through the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in our life in human language. It's difficult as we, as God's creation, trying to understand the Creator Himself. In some ways you could kind of say, it's very difficult for us as God's invention to understand the inventor. But over the next several weeks, we're gonna try our best to kind of understand the Holy Spirit. Because I think it's one of the most misunderstood and confusing persons of the Holy Trinity. Let me just kind of share with you that most of us kind of know the role of God the Father as best as our human minds can understand. We know that God the Father is the God of love. Put it to you this way, you can always tell the value of something based upon how much someone is willing to pay for it. You can always tell the value of something based upon how much someone is willing to pay for that item. So Father Nick, how much did God pay for us? He paid his son. He did something that none of us are willing to do. I, I love all of you very much, and I know you all love me, but let me be honest, I wouldn't be willing to give up my son so that we could have a better relationship. But God did that. The Bible says God is love. I think in some small way we can kind of understand, as best as our human minds can try to understand, what the role of Jesus Christ in the Trinity is. He's the one that paid the price. We hear in the Bible that he went through the shame, the blame, the spitting, the scourging, the whipping, all of that. He died so that we could live. That by his stripes, the Bible says, we are all healed. But what about this Holy Spirit, the Ayun Pnevma? What about this Holy Spirit? For many of us, we stop at the Father and the Son. We can kind of, in some small way, get to know the Father and the Son. But what about the Holy Spirit? Let me share with you some interesting facts about the Holy Spirit. It's mentioned 800 times in the Bible. In the very first chapter of the very first book in the Bible, the second verse says, the Holy Spirit was hovering over this earth. We hear about the Holy Spirit in our creed. We say, and in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the what? He's the giver of life. We hear about the Holy Spirit in the creation story. We hear about the Holy Spirit in Christ's birth. We hear about the Holy Spirit when Christ is baptized and the Holy Spirit descends upon Jesus. And we even hear about the Holy Spirit all throughout the book of Acts, which talks about how the church gets started. 
We would argue as Orthodox Christians that it is the Holy Spirit that is living and dwelling in the church that has allowed our church to exist despite wars, chaos, division for some 2,000 years. So let me make this very practical for you. The Holy Spirit is God's Spirit in you. The Holy Spirit is God's voice guiding you when you're about ready to compromise on something in your life. The Holy Spirit is the one that's giving you life. The Holy Spirit is the voice that's comforting you when you go through a difficult time. And every single day, friends, when you wake up in the morning, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you in your life on how you are called to live your life. It is God's Spirit that's inside of you. I love in the Gospel of John, if you can open up your Bibles to page 146, Jesus, when he's uh, at the Last Supper, we, what is called in the West, the Last Supper, we call it really the First Supper or the Mystical Supper. But at this Last Supper, if you will, on page 146, John chapter 14, 15, and 16 is Jesus' last message. It's almost like his last sermon to his people, to his disciples. You know what that whole message is about? The Holy Spirit. Listen to what it says. I'm going to look specifically at John chapter 14, verses 15 through 17. This is what it says. If you love me, you will obey my commandments. I will ask the Father, and this is where the Holy Spirit comes in, and I will come back to... I, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper. Sometimes that translation is the paraclete, who will stay with you forever. He is the Spirit who reveals the truth about God. He is the one that's constantly communicating to you every single morning. How does he communicate, Father Nick? That inner voice that kind of guides you in your walk of faith, that tells you don't compromise, be comforted, live your life according to the teachings of Christ, that is the Holy Spirit that is speaking to you. He is a spirit who reveals the truth about God. The world cannot receive him because it cannot see him or know him. And how, many, how oftentimes in our own walk of faith that we get the Father, we get the Son, but we stop at the Holy Spirit. But you know Him, listen, because He remains with you always and is in you always. The Holy Spirit is inside of you. And so, Father Nick, how do we apply? How do, how do we make or how do we connect to that Holy Spirit, I think there's a couple of points I want to share with you. Number one is, is that we have to be still and listen to the Spirit. You know, when you were baptized or when you were chrismated, the priest will say this prayer over you. He'll say the seal of the gift of the Holy Spirit is upon in whatever the person's name is. The seal of the gift of the Holy Spirit is upon you. Why do they say the word seal? You know what a seal is? A seal is a branding. It is a stamp that God puts on you. You're not your own. You came at a price and he is almost branding you like you would brand something and saying that because you're part of my flock, because you're part of the shepherd, the true shepherd, Jesus Christ, that you get a gift. And that gift is the voice, the spirit that is inside of you that is constantly called to guide you in your walk of faith. The key for you to do is to tune into it. And all throughout the day, church family, so often our thoughts have voices in our mind. That we are constantly listening to the voice of our thoughts. And sometimes that voice speaks louder than the Holy Spirit, than God's voice on the inside of you. When I, before I got ordained, I have to tell you this story, and some of you have heard this many times before, but I, when I went to the seminary, I didn't go to the seminary wanting to become a priest. I just simply wanted to go to the seminary to learn more about our faith. I was in love 
with what our Orthodox Christian faith is all about. Fast forward when I moved down here in 2000, fast forward to the end of 2007, in December of 2007, we were asked to take over and to be the priest of this church community. And I have to be totally honest with you, I didn't want at, at first, in fact, I oftentimes was fighting it. I didn't know if I wanted to truly become a priest because of all the responsibilities that it took, that I would be gone oftentimes from my family, that I would try to kind of be the best that I could be, but oftentimes dealing with just trying to guide people in their walk of faith. It's not like a business. You're trying to guide people towards the kingdom of heaven. Like my job is not only to teach you, but it is to lead you to the kingdom of heaven. And so there were voices, there were thoughts that had voices in my mind saying, Nick, don't do it. You don't need to do it. You can just continue to serve as the pastoral assistant of this church forever. You could just be the youth director of this church, and that's a noble and a great thing, a great honor that I had serving. And we went back and forth. I was talking to Roxanne and just saying, you know, I don't know if this is truly for me. And I'll never forget, we gathered around our little icon table, altar that we have in our home, and I just, we just prayed. And we believe that it was the voice of the Holy Spirit that said, Nick, it's your time. Had it not been for that spirit, I call it God's spirit that was inside of us, listening to it, tuning into it, I might have let those other voices dictate the course of my life. My challenge to you is be still. Listen to the voice of God that is speaking to you. When that other voice, those thoughts, other thoughts have voices, if they don't lead you to God, don't follow them. Tune in. Number two, once you've tuned in, my encouragement for you is follow him. Father Nick, how do I know if I'm following that spirit? Anything that leads you astray from God is not of the Holy Spirit. Anything that guides you down the wrong path, it's not from God. So when you begin to think about opening your mouth about something and that inner ear tells you, don't do it, or when you think about compromising on your faith and you think, oh, it's okay, and you hear that inner voice saying, no, let me guide you a different route, that is the Holy Spirit guiding you towards who God wants you to be. Your job and my job is to follow it. And let me just kind of go a little bit off script. You will never have peace in your life following the other voices in your life. You might have an earthly peace because you're financially stable, you've got a roof over your head, you've got money in your account, but it'll never be a long-term peace if you don't listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to you every single day. And number three, after you've tuned in, after you would followed him, number three, last one, is be comforted by him. You know, when I was when my dad passed away, right before he passed away, that moment for us was extremely difficult. And I'm going to tell you first and foremost that I'm just like you. I'm not better than you. I'm trying to be the best Christian I can be. But like all of us, when you face a tidal wave coming against you, everyone, I don't care who they are, will face times in which the earth around them can shake. And I remember from my, in my situation with my dad, being the patriarch of our family, the one who was kind of like guiding and leading us. I remember as we were kind of going through this process of dealing with his death and more importantly, dealing with his illness leading up to his death, many of, our, many of my siblings and for sure my mom was going, how are we going to get through this? Like, how are we going to deal with the loss of someone that we th thought was the cornerstone within our life? And I'll never forget this. That when my dad was in his last breath, the worry, those thoughts that have voices, were speaking loud. And I'll never forget that the moment that my dad breathed his last breath, he glowed. He, the room literally glowed. And not only did it glow, there was a pouring of peace that came upon us. I cannot explain it other than to say that as best as our human words can explain that, that's the Holy Spirit. 
That's the peace of God saying, you know what? It's going to be all right. You're going to get through this. We've got to be able to tune in, follow, and be comforted by him. I'll leave you with this. Our planet is an amazing planet. If you just simply take some time to study just how extraordinary God created this earth, it's unbelievable. I was watching TV recently and noticed how on this planet there is a place very close to the equator called the doldrums. Some of you that may have been in the military, you might have heard of that word. We oftentimes use it in an expression of how we feel. Father Nick, I really feel like I'm in the doldrums. It is a feeling of weakness, tired, no energy, just kind of going through life without any type of passion. What makes this area near the equator called the doldrums is this. It is where the northern hemisphere winds are going in one direction, and the southern hemisphere winds are going into another direction, an opposite direction, and when they meet, wind stops. And back in the day, if you were on a sailing ship and you happened to go through the doldrums, you would stop because there's no wind to take you through that. And many times people would sadly die in the doldrums. Do you know what the name of spirit in Hebrew is in the Old Testament? Those of you that are from the Middle East, you will know this. It's the Hebrew word and the Arabic word are the same exact word. It's uh, ruch. And it's almost like you could imagine you have a piece of popcorn in your throat and you're trying to get it out. That's how you have to say it. Ruch. In the Greek language, the primary language of the New Testament, the word is pnevma. We translate that as spirit, and that is the word that we use. But do you know what pnevma and ruch have in common? It's the same exact meaning in Hebrew and in Greek is this, a blast of air. Some of us, as we're in the doldrums of life, when we find ourselves in that difficulty trying to navigate through night life, maybe we just need to tune into some blasting of some fresh air in our life. And my encouragement for you is, tomorrow morning when you get up, tune in to the Holy Spirit that's speaking to you. Follow that voice because all the other voices will give you temporary satisfaction, but not permanent peace. And then number three, that you are comforted always by that Holy Spirit. Because when you wake up in the morning, God is knocking at the door of your heart, and he's trying his best, and he's knocking, saying, I want to talk to you, because the thundering noise of this world is talking louder than me, but I want you to tune in to that voice. And every day, the challenge is that, Lord... I'm going to tune into your voice and block out that voice. That I'm going to listen to that voice that's in my life calling me to change the way I'm living my life. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.